Hey everybody, welcome back to the Print 3D channel. This is the GTEC A20M Color Mixing 3D Printer, and today we're going to show you step-by-step -step on how to assemble it, so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back, and thank you for joining me here on the Print 3D channel. GTEC recently sent over the A20M Color Mixing 3D Printer, and I had considered doing a live stream, which is what I normally do with all the unboxings of my 3D printers or any other tech that I get in on the channel. But usually during those live streams, you're unable to see all the details of the assembly. So I thought it would be cooler to prepare an assembly video for you guys. So I'm going to show you step by step on how you can assemble the GTEC A20M Color Mixing 3D Printer. Now this video will be a two part series. The first part will be the actual build of the printer all the way up to turning the power on. And the second part of the build series will be inserting the filament, calibrating the printer, and starting your first print. Now a little disclaimer before we go any further. This printer was sent to the channel for free for review. We are not being compensated in any way for our opinion, the unboxing, or our review of the GTEC A20M color mixing 3D printer. We do get to keep the printer, but we're not being paid for our opinions or our review. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the printer before we start the build. This printer features a 255 by 255 by 255 millimeter build volume. It also features an all metal hot end with active cooling on both the hot end and on the part cooling. There is a all in one case at the bottom that encloses the power supply, and the motherboard along with the LCD. It also has dual filament runout sensors and a removable glass plate, which makes it easier to remove the prints once they're finished. So those are some minor details of the GTEC A20M color mixing printer. As with all of GTEC's printers, the assembly is actually quite easy. You're really mostly installing the top gantry with the lower systems and then connecting some wires and installing your Bowden tubes and you should be ready to print. But I wanted to prepare a video so you guys can see step by step with nice clear video on how to assemble the GTEC A20M color mixing 3D printer. So let's go ahead and get started with the build. Carefully open the box your printer arrives in and the first thing you should see is the instructions. Now take a moment to familiarize yourself with the steps involved for assembling your GTEC A20M 3D printer. The first thing to remove from the package is going to be your glass build plate. Carefully cut the tape and remove the build plate and set that aside for later. As you can see, the build plate is covered in GTEC's super plate surface, which makes it easy to remove the prints. Remove the next layer of foam to reveal the bulk of the parts for your assembly, which includes your power cord, US or UK, your spool holder parts, your tools, and a miscellaneous parts bag, a USB cable with two filament samples, your zip ties for your wiring, and your spare Bowden tubes, your main hardware bag, which contains your filament sensors, your bed clips, and your SD card, and of course, the classic GTEC mouse pad. Next are your extruder drive assemblies with all the hardware mounted and ready. Both are identical, so be sure to inspect each of them for any damage or missing parts. The last piece on this level is the upper gantry with all the hardware mounted. The extruder should also move freely, and be sure to inspect for any damage or missing parts. This would be a good time to check that Z-axis rod to make sure it's not bent or warped in any way. Remove the next foam insert to reveal the lower assembly. Carefully remove this from the foam and check for any damage. The wiring harness is also attached and it's very well labeled. The build bags and all the parts that are contained within that first level are in all these bags. It's a good idea to separate all these bags and make sure that you have all the parts and do a brief inventory of everything you need to build your A20M color mixing 3D printer. Step one is to attach the upper gantry to the lower assembly. Using a piece of the foam that came with the packaging, set the lower assembly down on top of it with the edge exposed, and then set your upper gantry piece on top of the lower assembly. That way you can feed in your first of the M5 by 35 millimeter screws in to attach the upper and lower pieces together. Once you have that firmly seated, insert the second bolt and tighten it as firmly as you can. 
Now carefully turn the printer on its side on top of that foam and insert and tighten down the two remaining M5 by 35 millimeter bolts into the upper gantry through the lower assembly. Now that you have the upper gantry and lower assembly attached, you're ready to start working on the extruder drive motors. Step two is to attach the filament runout sensors to each of the extruder drive assemblies. The hardware needed for each of these is already attached, so you will need to remove those before starting this step. If the hardware is missing from each of the filament runout sensors attachment points, see the extra spare parts bag that came with your 3D printer kit. Attach each sensor to the drive assemblies and the sensor itself should move freely once it's completed. Now just repeat the steps for the second extruder and you'll have both of your filament runout sensors installed and ready to go. Step 3 is to attach the completed assemblies to the top cross member of your 3D printer. Loosen the attached T-nuts and slide the first assembly into position and then tighten the T-nut bolts, making sure that the T-nuts have rotated and are gripping the aluminum slots. Attach the second assembly and position it with plenty of room for those filament holders. And then tighten down the T-nut bolts, again making sure that those T-nuts have rotated and are gripping the aluminum frame. The next part of the assembly is to assemble the spool holder brackets. Inside the parts bag, remove four of the T-nut assemblies and a supplied hex key. You're going to want to separate those T-nut assemblies because you're going to attach two of those for each of the metal parts that come with the spool holder brackets. And you're also going to want to leave those T-nuts a little bit loose so you can attach them to the upright of the 3D printer. Once you have all your T-nuts attached to the metal frame parts, go ahead and separate the plastic parts for the spool holder before mounting them to the metal frames. With those T-nuts loosened, insert the brackets into the slots of the aluminum extrusion between the two drive assemblies, making sure that the plastic parts hang directly over the filament sensors towards the back of the printer. Carefully tighten each of those T-nut bolts, ensuring that the T-nuts themselves have rotated it and are gripping the inside of the aluminum frame. Insert one of the plastic spool holders into the mounted bracket and tighten the large plastic nut until it's firmly attached. You can go ahead and mount the second plastic spool holder onto the remaining bracket before attaching it to the upright. With the T-nuts loose, go ahead and attach it to the top upright and tighten the T-nut bolts and making sure that those T-nuts actually rotate and grip into the aluminum and then slide it into place next to the extruder drive assembly. Next, insert the Bowden tubes into the drive assemblies by pushing in on the inner collar and push the tube in until it stops. And then repeat that for the other drive assembly. Slide the corresponding Bowden tube into the extruder carriage, again pressing down on the inner collar before inserting the tube until it stops. And repeat that for the other side.
Next up is the wiring, and all the cables are clearly marked. We'll start with the extruder cable and insert that carefully into the extruder assembly. After that, we'll insert our x-axis motor cable and then our end stop. And be careful, you might want to use a non-conductive tool if you need any assistance plugging in any of these connectors. And make sure you pay special attention to the way the connectors actually connect. After that, we'll connect our Z-axis motor, and then we'll connect our end stop to the Z-axis as well. This one might prove a little bit challenging, but just take your time, and you'll be able to connect these two pieces together. Finally, we'll connect the Y-axis end stop. The motor is already pre-connected, but if the cable has come loose, check the connection to make sure it's firmly seated. The next stage will be connecting our extruder drive cables and the filament runout sensor cables as well. Now pay special attention to this. The extruder cables are clearly marked and they are also paired with the runout sensors as well. Extruder E1 is to the right closest to the threaded rod. So we'll carefully insert those two connectors, paying special attention to the pins, and firmly seat each of the cables. Next, connect the wire package marked E0 to the left side extruder drive, and of course, connect your filament runout sensor cable as well. And that'll complete the wiring for the printer. Now we can attach our build plate to the Y-axis build carriage. But first, once you have the plastic removed, Take four of the binder clips from the build part bag and attach them to each of the four corners to attach the glass plate to the Y-axis carriage. The last stage of the build is to remove that plastic film from the LCD. Check your power supply to make sure you're on the correct voltage. Plug in your power cable and flip the rocker switch to turn on your 3D printer. So now that we have the printer assembled and it's powered on, it's ready to go. The next stage of the build series will be the inserting of the filament, the calibration of the printer, and of course starting our first print, but that'll be in the next video. This just gives you an opportunity to put together your GTEC A20M color mixing 3D printer using a video guide. Now a couple of things I want to talk about about the build before we close out for today. First off, the two Bowden tubes that were actually installed with the printer, there was a small chunk of filament already in them. So I used the brand new tubes because I felt that those would be a better option. Also, you're given this extra nozzle, which I probably won't install. My experience with removing the nozzles on the GTEC printers has always been proven a little bit difficult, but you do get an extra nozzle. You're also given a one gig SD card, which is nice and handy to transfer your prints. And with all GTEC printers, you're giving a nozzle cleaning kit which consists of a small needle and a larger needle to poke out through the Bowden tube or through your extruder. Now you're also given a few extra parts just in case you drop a part or lose a part or one of the parts are missing from the build bags. So it's nice to have some extra parts and you're also given a full set of tools you're gonna need to build the printer. Now I didn't do any of the wire management. I like to do that while the first print is going or after the first print has finished so I can get a good idea of where I actually need to manage my wires. So we'll do the wire management in the next part of the video. Also included with the kit were two small sample rolls of filament, which I probably won't use because the first model I will want to print will probably consume more than this filament. But it is handy to have two different colors of filament when you have a color mixing printer. And you're also giving a brand new USB cable just in case you do need to reflash your firmware. Other than that, the build went along very smoothly as it always is with every GTEC printer that I've received here on the channel and I really can't wait to get the filament loaded, do the calibration, and start printing. But that'll be in the next part of this series. And of course, a huge shout out to GTEC for sending over the printer for us to build and review on the channel. We really appreciate it. Well, that about wraps it up for the GTEC A20M color mixing 3D printer build video. I hope you guys found this episode interesting and informative, and if you're looking for ways to support the channel, check out that Patreon link and all the other affiliate links, and all the other ways you can support the channel down in the description, along with where you can purchase your very own GTEC A20M color mixing printer, and links to the instruction guides that we followed to assemble our printer. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, 
comment, like, and share those videos, and I'll see you in the next part of the build series for the A20M Color Mixing 3D Printer.